Meanwhile, the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 said the Federal Ministry of Health has shortlisted for further investigations three Nigerian drugs which have the potential to cure COVID-19 or treat eight symptoms. The chairman of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 and secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, confirmed this on Wednesday at the PTF press conference in Abuja, where the Ministry of Health warned that Nigeria's health system could not cope with increasing COVID-19 cases. The SSG said the Federal Ministry of Health had held a virtual meeting with some researchers and scientists who had made claims about COVID-19 cure and shot late says three for further research. The Minister of State for Health, Olorin Nimbe Mamora, confirmed the screening and said the companies had been asked to submit samples of their drugs. And joining us via Skype is the Minister of State for Health, Olorin Nimbe Mamora. Thank you, Senator Mamora, for joining us tonight on the news. Thank you very much. The total bed space available in the country right now, that is from our isolation and treatment centers, uh, the number is, is about, um, that's about uh, a little over 5,000, 5, maybe about 5,300 bed spaces available. And uh, that's uh, from about uh, 112 treatment centers uh, solution centers available in the country. And uh, when you look at um, even the states that have, uh, well, what we have recommended, at least uh, up not less than 300 bed spaces and isolation centers put together, we, we're looking at uh, um, that no state should have less than uh, um, 300. But it's only five states at, at the moment, and the uh, FCT that have such number of uh, bed spaces. And 21 states have less than 100 bed spaces uh, for uh, isolation and uh, treatment. So when you put all this together and uh, put, I mean, just oppose with the rising number of cases, then it means we, run, we will be running short of uh, uh, the, the, the uh, number of uh, bed spaces available for the confirmed cases if these cases were to be in hospital. But if we have to put ability to cope. So that's just that's just the, the, the I mean the, the picture being painted and that's why we are calling on uh, uh, the various state governments and of course philanthropists to come uh, to Macedonia, so to speak, and help at least build more bed spaces to accommodate the, uh, the, the anticipated overflow. So that's just the picture. Now, also, the, the Presidential Tax Force PTF on COVID-19 has disclosed that three out of the numerous claims of COVID-19 local cure have been validated and forwarded for further investigation. How hopeful are you that Nigeria might come up with a local remedy? Well, uh, let me correct that impression. I think uh, the, the, the statement uh, of the President Tax Force was uh, uh, wrongly put out there. No, we don't talk of validation at this stage. What we said, fortunately, I convened that meeting. Um, we had 19 uh, traditional medical practitioners that were in attendance, some uh, physically, some um, Line. You know, it was a virtual engagement. It was just a suggestion. Now, we should look into few of this and then see how we can fast track and then assist those ones that have been, um, that have gone through the crucible, so to speak. And what do we mean? We are saying that everyone that has submitted a claim will have his or her claim subjected to due process, which will mean going through NAVDAC, going through National Institute of Pharmaceutical Research and Development, going through Ethics Research Committee, so, and then going through clinical trials. So th these are the various things. Th th these are not things that you just do overnight. It's, it's, a, it's a long process. And we are saying that at the end of the day, before we zero on few, let's see those few that have really scaled through the bars 
if you like. And then we can focus attention on those two, maybe three or four, and then take them through the uh, full uh, uh, process. That's what we are saying. Not that it's, it is premature at this stage to talk of taking uh, three, but there is hope. And don't forget that uh, the bulk of our people, they still patronize this uh, traditional uh, alternative uh, uh, medicine practitioners. Now, lastly, Senator, what's your take on the position taken by NAVDAC to continue clinical trials of the hydroxychloroquine in spite of its use being suspended by the WHO, the World Health Organization? Well, I think the first thing to say is that the WHO, yes, is a, is a global body that regulates and, uh, uh, well, the highest decision making, so to speak, regarding issues of uh, um, health globally. But we also must appreciate that what WHO does is to issue guidelines and provide guidance. I repeat, issue guidelines and provide guidance. WHO will not compel any country to go a particular, in a particular way. Each country is still left with, you know, its own decision making regarding what to do and not and, and not what to do. So each country is left with that decision at a given point in time. But WHO will provide the guidance, it could provide the guidelines. That's number one. Number two is to say that uh, they, they see oftentimes what we get are figures or data from other clients be it US, be it uh, UK, be it uh, uh, Germany, be it uh, India. But there is need for us to start working out on our own figures. That is, what is our own experience? The Nigerian experience, which we can then rely on 